When you're creating artwork, especially if you're working for a web and for print, you're dealing with a two-dimensional surface. And one of the ways you can make your work seem more dimensional is by applying one of Photoshop's 10 different special effects with the Styles button at the bottom of the Layers panel. You can apply these 10 styles to any object on any layer, including text. So let's start by reviewing each one of them with our Jelly's Text layer, which I have selected in the Layers panel. To access the styles, you'll click the FX button at the bottom of the panel, and then you'll choose one of the styles to open up the styles box. So let's say we decide we want to start with the drop shadow. This brings open our layer style dialog box. And on the left side of the panel, you'll see a category listing of styles. Right now, the drop shadow style is selected, and you can tell it's selected because it has the check mark and it's highlighted in blue. Once you have selected by putting the check mark there and selecting it with the highlighted color, you can see in the middle of the screen the attributes for modifying that specific style. So right now, the default look of a drop shadow is to use the blending mode of multiply with a black and the opacity of 75%. The rest of this, though, is completely up to you. You can change the angle, you can change the distance, you can change the spread, and even the size of the drop shadow. And another thing that I really love about the drop shadow is that while the layer style dialog box is open, you could actually click and drag to position the drop shadow in any place relative to the object that's being styled. The global light feature seen here deals with a single light source for your entire document. It's usually a good idea to have a single unified light source. Think of the sun coming down. You would want all the shadows to be cast in the same direction. If, though, you wanted to have two separate light sources, or even more than two, what you'd have to do is deselect the global light source and then adjust your drop shadow. That would mean that that one object would have its own light source separate from the rest of the objects that also have drop shadows applied to them. In the Quality section, there are contours, and contours determine how the drop shadow or whatever special effect you're adding, whatever layer effect you're adding, how they fall relative to their shape. And these different curves will adjust how the drop shadow displays. Now, some of them really don't look like drop shadows, but some of them look kind of cool. So what I usually recommend is if you're not super happy with the drop shadow, but you know you want some kind of special effect going on behind your object, just click through, try the different ones, and if you see something that you like, stick with it. Anti-aliased is one of those options that I always say turn on if you ever get the chance because it will smooth the edges of any semi-transparent pixels around the edges of your object selected. Noise is like grain, so you can increase or decrease the grain just by using the slider. Now, we've gone through all of the drop shadow effects, and I think what we'll do is we'll stay inside the layer style dialog box, and we'll go through some of these other options one at a time so you can see how they work. We'll start at the top now. We'll do bevel and emboss. With the bevel and emboss, you have a few different options under the style menu. There's inner bevel, outer bevel, emboss, pillow emboss, and stroke emboss. And each one of these will give you a slightly different effect. You can also change the technique from a smooth emboss to a hard chisel or a soft chisel emboss, but the most realistic one, I think, is the smooth. You can also adjust the depth above or below 100%, and depending on the object that you have selected, you'll be able to determine which depth is right for yours. You can shift the direction from up to down, and also increase or decrease the size. So increasing the size here really gives us a much deeper, smoother, rounder bevel. You can also soften out the bevel, smoothing the edges of it with the soften slider. The shading has an angle as well as an altitude. And if you happen to know the degree, you can plug it in by typing it in the field here. You could also just click anywhere within this little angle altitude box and adjust the direction of the bevel. And I kind of like it with the light source from above. Gloss contour, again, any contour will change how the effect is falling across your object. So you can play around with those. I'm just going to leave it back at the first one. And there's that anti-aliased option. So I always say turn it on to create a smoother effect 
the highlight and shadow modes are set to the default screen and multiply and this will give you the best looking type of bevel and emboss but you can certainly change the blending modes change the colors do whatever you want to them underneath the bevel and emboss is another option called contour and contour has a bunch of different options that you can scroll through or click on rather and this will also change the contour of your bevel again you may find something that looks exactly like what you need though you hadn't thought of it yourself if you find it like this one's pretty cool when you find it just click on it and again choose the anti-aliased option you could also modify the range like for me I think it looks kinda cooler to make the range a little bit smaller another option is texture with texture you can apply a pattern to the sides of the bevel there are several default patterns in here already loaded that you could choose from and depending on which one you choose that will change the way the pattern is falling now notice that this was color and this was color the color is sort of sucked out of the pattern and just the pattern is applied as a texture you could also load other patterns through the options menu here and open up the patterns or the patterns to or rock patterns any of these can be added and what you'll do is you'll select one and choose append and it will add those other textures to the bottom of your textures box I'm gonna leave it at the one that it was before and then actually I'm gonna turn the texture and leave the contour on now with the stroke the stroke deals with the outer edges of your object in this case the default size is set to three pixels the position is outside the objects edges blending mode is set to normal and the opacity is at 100 percent you can also choose when you're working with type to fill the type with a color in which case you could change the color let's say we wanted a sample from the artwork on the board and we could also increase the thickness of it and position it inside or outside or in the center and then you can also adjust the blending mode maybe you want to do an overlay and I'm just going to use my up down arrows to scroll through some of these options and then the opacity of just the stroke itself if you wanted to you could also fill it with a pattern or a gradient I'll just leave it here on color let's move on now to dealing with the inner shadow the inner shadow is kind of like an outer shadow but it falls on the inside of your selected object the default blending mode like the drop shadow is set to multiply in black with 75 percent opacity but the rest of the stuff you can modify and since it's so similar to the drop shadow but it's for the inner shadow I'm just gonna leave everything as it is and let you play around with that style on your own the inner glow allows you to give your selected object a glow from the inside of the shape now because the type here is set to white we're probably not going to see anything happening here but what we could do is sort of fake it by applying a color overlay a color overlay will fill your selected object with the selected color set in this area here along with whatever blending mode you want so now when we apply the inner glow you can see that it's sort of making the inside look like it's luminant from the inside once you have your inner glow category selected you can play around with any of these other things the blending mode by default is set to screen but you can certainly change it same with the color the opacity you can add noise you can change the technique from softer to more precise adjust the source from the center to the edge increase or decrease the size and apply any contours to it a satin is almost like looking at the object if it had silk or satin applied to the surface of it again the blending mode is set to default and the color is set to black opacity here is 50 percent and you can change any of these attributes as you like I think to really see the satin effect though the best thing to do is to click on the different contours to see how they apply and change the look of your object there's that anti-aliased option as well and you can turn that on we already looked at the color low overlay but let's say if you wanted to you could change the color and you could change the blending mode so that it will lighten or darken do a linear burn and I'm just using my up down arrows so vivid light actually changes the green into this almost neon yellow exclusion is almost the opposite color then we'll switch down to gradient overlays the default gradient is the black to white 
but you can reverse it if you wanted to, white to black, or you can apply any of the preset gradients to your object. You could even create your own gradient with whatever colors it was that you wanted to apply to them. Then uh, you can adjust the opacity, play around with the angle, how the gradient is falling across your object. And then you could also increase or decrease the scale. Pattern overlay acts in a similar manner. It takes the existing selected pattern and applies it to the surface of your object. Here the color remains intact and if you wanted you could apply any of the other free patterns that come with Photoshop. So let's say we wanted to do a rock pattern, we'll append to add those pattern styles to this menu and we can select and apply any of them to our object. You can also increase or decrease the opacity and adjust the scale. Sometimes the patterns come really small or really large and uh, by adjusting the scale you can create some cool interesting effects. The outer glow is the last thing that I'll show you here and that really is a glow around the outside of the shape. One thing that's really nice here is if you increase the size it can make it look like there's a light source shining from behind the object. And then if you decrease the opacity, it just gives it this gentle sort of neon edge to it. So as I said earlier, you can apply as many of these styles to your objects as you like. You could toggle them on and off through this styles category menu. And when you have everything set the way you like it, just click OK. Once your styles are applied to your object, you'll see the FX icon to the right of your layer in your Layers panel. And if you expand that, you'll see an effects visibility icon, which you can click to toggle all the styles off and on at once. Or you can click the individual visibility icons to modify the individual styles. If you needed to adjust any of the styles, just double click the FX to reopen the Layer Style dialog box, apply your changes, or add as many things as you like, click OK. This is infinitely editable, so you don't have to feel stuck with something. If you make a decision, you can always come back and change your mind.